Let's do some darning today, but instead of just a regular darning tutorial, because there are many, many different methods to use, I thought let's make this a little fun and actually use a 1954 darning tutorial from a vintage sewing book that I have. And I'll talk you through the instructions they have here. And then I'll actually talk, take you through step by step on how to do the darn using this uh, vintage sewing technique. My sewing friends, welcome back. Uh, if we are just meeting for the first time, welcome. <laughs> My name is Evelyn Wood and here on this channel we do lots of things. Uh, vintage sewing skills for our modern day sewing. And so I thought uh, I do a thing called Monday Mending. A lot of my followers here will know that every Monday I go to my pile and pick at least one item of mending to just get it done. One of the things I do a lot of is darning and I get asked a lot of questions on how to do this. And well, there are a lot of different techniques uh, to use for darning. It's kind of hard because it depends on the fabric, it depends on the damage, depends on your personal aesthetic, like what you like. So there's a few different like things to judge on what kind of darning to use but I thought it would be really fun to actually uh, use a darning instructions from this 1954 book that I have it's a vintage sewing book thrift with a needle it is one of my absolute favorites the entire book is just about like altering and uh, mending and garment renovations so let's go through the actual uh, vintage tutorial here what it says and then i'll actually break it down and show you how to do the mend and then at the end i'll add some extra bonus tips i guess of my own personal experience that i would add and what i use in darning uh with more success that helps me. So uh, to start, let's see what 1954 Thrift with a Needle actually uh, tells us to do. Oh, and on a side note, the entire chapter is called Darning and Art. So FYI, we're about to create art here. <laughs> <laughs> and just to begin, this type of darning is for a woven fabric uh, and for a small hole. So if you have a large hole, you'll probably need to look at patching or something like that. Instead, this is a method for a small hole on a woven fabric. A knit will be similar but a little bit different because it stretches. Again, it's all about sort of assessing what you need to uh to do. I have actually made a video on how to assess mending, so I'll link all those down below as well. And let's begin the 1954 instructions. Mending small holes. To mend a small hole, the destroyed threads must be replaced and the worn area surrounding the hole reinforced. The darn should begin just beyond the thin portion with a few running stitches taken above the center of the hole. Keep the darn in the shape of the diamond with the length of the rows increasing at the center and decreasing at the ends. However, the outline must be kept uneven. A knot is not used and a small loop is left at the turning of each row. The lengthwise threads should be made first. When the hole is reached, the needle is brought to the right side so that the thread may be placed over the raw edges as it is stretched across the open portion, re-entering the fabric at the opposite side. When the diamond has been complete, clip the thread. Turn the darn around so that the crosswise threads may be woven in. Use running stitches for the area, wo worn area. When the hole is reached, pass the needle over and under lengthwise threads for a plain weave. Remember that the threads that you go over in the first row are the ones that you go under in the next. Great. I guess you know how to darn now, right? <laughs> yeah. So let me break this down and let's actually uh, use those instructions. Uh, I will give you the step by step of those of that way of darning uh, in my, I guess, in my words, in my version on how to darn this. The tutorial doesn't say this, but I always uh, like to uh, knot off on the underside and leave a little bit of sort of tail length, if you will. I'm going to cut this, but there's still a little bit of length hidden in the actual garment. So let's talk through what's going to happen here. 
So instructions say that the destroyed area needs to be um, replaced. So this little hole, we need threads in there and we need to reinforce all around here because these little cut threads are just going to fray out as you probably know. So the tutorial assumes that you know what a darning stitch, what a running stitch is. <laughs> so let's just clarify this to begin with. So the actual stitches that we're going to use are, are just a, called a darning stitch or a running stitch. So it's literally just going up, down, up, down, up, down. Now this is exaggerated and it needs to be on a minute scale, but you're basically doing just this motion, up, down, up, down. But the scale of this is we are reweaving the, the fabric here. So this needs to be each one of these little threads is like that make up the fabric is what we're going up and down and picking up and going under those. So it needs to be like one of these each. So keep in mind, it is very, very tiny, the actual running stitch that we're doing here. So it is telling us to uh, keep a diamond shape. So uh, it is sort of saying this kind of a shape um, over the area, obviously quite a bit smaller though. Now it tells us to do lengthwise threads first. So according to the diagram, we go up, down, up, down, up, down in our stitch, up, down, up, down, all through here. And then we do the crosswise stitches. And when we get to the hole, uh, I'll explain what it means through there. The tutorial states a knot is not used and a small loop is left at the turning of each row. Uh, so that is indicating that as we come up here and are turning around, we're supposed to leave a little loop like this. Personally, I can't bring myself to leave those loose threads on here because it, they're just going to pull out. So I'm just pulling them in. I'm not going to pull them tight because I don't want to um, draw this in. So I'm keeping it loose, but I just am modifying the tutorial here and I won't leave loops. Now you are seeing the right side of my uh, piece here. I like to work from the right side so I can see what's going on. And so as per tutorial, we are going to do our running stitches up and down, up and down a lengthwise direction first. And we'll be working in sort of a diamond shape. So we go lower down here to uh, more like wider through here and then lower through here again. And the stitches should be tighter as they get through here and a little bit longer as they go through the middle. According to the tutorial, it says when the hole is reached, the needle is brought to the right side so that the thread may be placed over the raw edges and is stretched across the open portion re-entering the fabric on the opposite side. So when we get to the hole, we want to come up onto the right side of the fabric and we actually stretch it across to the other side. Some more darning stitches over there. And this is where it starts to get, uh, like where we're filling in this empty space through here. So we'll leave these long threads because when we come back in the crosswise direction, we're actually going to weave in and out so that it becomes like fabric. And of course, you probably have used a matching thread color so it will not look this bad. And so when the diamond has been complete, clip the thread, turn the darn around so that the crosswise threads may be woven in. This means uh, clipping the thread. I'm going to keep mine in one loop because I don't want to clip it, but turning it around so now we can do the uh, crosswise, but it's easier to sew generally, hand sewing uh, in front of you like crosswise and backwise, but that's all that means. And I need to complete my diamond a little bit more. So I'm gonna taper this down a little bit further yet because I have not clipped my thread, I'm going to cheat and just re-weave in down to this point of the diamond so I can actually start and come one side all the way to the other. And now the process is just repeated until, and now we keep just do those running stitches again over and up and down, up and down, just one little thread at a time. And now we are supposed to use running stitches for the worn area. When the hole is reached, pass the needle over and under the lengthwise threads for as for a plain weave. Remember that the threads that you go over in the first row are the ones you go under in the next. So this means that when we get to this hole here, all of our long lengthwise threads that we have left there before, we now need to actually weave in in this direction and we need to go uh, over, under, in opposite. So these ones here, um, let's pretend like these, my fingers are the threads here. So as we come with our needle, we would need to go over, under, over, under, but then it would be the opposite 
when we come over the next rung. So they go over and under, and then this one would match that one over there. Yeah, I've just twisted my fingers in a knot here. So this is what we're sort of replicating with our teeny tiny little stitches through the hole here. And you can see why doing the smallest amount of stitches and you need far more like lengthwise threads than you think to actually reweave in. And basically we're creating fabric in this little hole here. And just as I started and do another knot, just so I can have that extra security and I know that my thread won't slip out. Now that is not according to the tutorial. That is an Evelyn Wood tip for you. So how did you go? It's uh, pretty tricky, right? So there are a few tips, uh, extra things that I do on top of darning, but uh, basically that is your basic darning for whatever you do, be it woven, knits, whatever. Uh, you would modify the way that you do it for the look, for the fabric, for the type of um, hole that you have. So some of the things that I do a little differently, I don't personally like to sort of reweave in uh, under the hole, so to say. I like to just do the darning, but have fabric underneath there to, to actually darn with. I find it always looks pretty messy. I'm just not like, there is no way that I can do enough little like yarns to actually look like fabric. It's just not happening. So <laughs> I often prefer to, if it's a small little hole, one thing that I really suggest is a fusible interfacing. So I usually get a little tiny circle and fuse it onto the back and it's just like a little dot just over the, the hole. So one, it will actually hold all those broken yarns in place and stop it fraying out. And two, it gives you a backing to actually weave uh, your, do your darning stitches onto. I find for me that works pretty well. I mean, tiny stitches, you don't want to actually see the interfacing and I'm not ever much of a fan of, you know, putting all the glues and everything on, but it can be a lifesaver. If you plan on putting something in the wash a lot, like the washing machine, this can really help because it's going to be a lot sturdier. Now, I personally prefer this kind of um, method where it just looks blended into the, the garment. And of course, in a matching thread color, you would not see this very much at all. That's my personal preference, but a lot of uh, modern mendings, if you will, are quite visible. And a lot of people do this sort of thing in a square or a patch, and you'll see a lot of other actual tutorials um, on darning will show you to actually outline yourself a square, usually a square because it's far easier than a circle to do. And you actually outline that first to give yourself a template, a guide, so you can keep your stitches in that square and it helps uh, keep everything accurate. So if you like that sort of a look, definitely do that. And with that more modern type of look, I've used embroidery floss for mine because I find embroidery floss actually matches the, the fluffiness of a lot of our fabrics more. And so it blends in and looks a little bit uh, less conspicuous. So my biggest tip is that basically do smaller stitches than you think that you have to do the smallest possible. So I usually like to use a really big needle, but in this case for darning, a small tiny needle is definitely best uh, to help get you those tiny little stitches that you need. Generally, we all are just not that fine as seamstresses, uh, myself included. And it's just find it, like we find it so tedious and difficult to just get one single little thread up and down. Oh, so hard. So a tiny little needle will definitely help you there um, in that even if you're like me and like something big to hold on to normally, do go down the needle size. I think you'll find it very useful. I think that uh, we are in a place where mending our clothes and even visible mending is like a stamp against fast fashion. It's kind of a badge of honor to say, I don't do fast fashion. I mend my clothes instead, uh, and which I think is fantastic. And so I always encourage everybody to mend rather than throw things away. I know that you do as well, because that is why you're here. And you've probably heard me talk about Monday mending before. If you want to join in Monday mending, all you have to do is every Monday, just go to your wardrobe and pick just at least one item of mending to do and get it done. I do this to keep myself accountable to myself. I found my pile just grew and grew and grew and I never got to it. So uh, it helped give me a day that I just picked one item, of course, and to be more sustainable in our fashion is very, very important and get these mending jobs done. So use the hashtag Monday mending on your own men's on Instagram so I can see them. I love Love to see what you all get up to because you do some amazing mending. Do check the description box below for a bunch of other videos that I think will really help you on mending and just getting 
honing down and getting better at those sewing skills. So thank you very much for watching and until next time my friends, happy sewing. Bye.